Uh, I've spent some time in a Vaishnava monastery, better known as the Hare Krishnas, and their scriptures say that the Buddha is an incarnation of God or Krishna. Do you think that this was a tactic to reduce people converting from Hinduism to Buddhism? Hmm. I don't think so. Mm. Because actually this is more a Hindu uh, belief than a Buddhist belief. So um, how, could, how could they uh, have gotten people to become Buddhists or Hindus to become Buddhists? Uh, no, it's just to theory. reduce people, to oh. stop people from converting. Oh. Oh well, yeah. Then I do think, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Probably that was the case. Then I understood it wrong. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was going to say in. Uh, hmm. I was going to say in Islam, uh, Jesus Christ is one of their hmm. prophets. So I don't think it's unusual in cultures that grew up together to have s to <laughs> share <laughs> figures. Well, in in a religion that, and most religions claim to be universal truth. No? Christianity claims to be the whole truth. Islam claims to be the whole truth. Uh, Hinduism also claims to be a philosophy that encompasses the whole of reality. So to to allow for something outside of that doctrine is uh, not possible. So regardless of whether it's a, a jealousy thing or a worry about people leaving, it's, it's uh, a way of, of uh, blocking out the truth, really, that there do exist other truths or other religious paths, uh, you know, because it's a threat to your, to your belief to think that there could be something else, like, like an enlightenment that isn't your enlightenment. So th they, they therefore uh, f find an explanation. So people will come to the teacher, well, what about the Buddha? Uh, well, Buddha was just another, actually, Vishnu ha or Krishna has many incarnations, and, and Buddha is just another, you know, and so this is how these these theories come up and it can become so ingrained in people that I've, I've talked to these people the, the Hare Krishnas and they'll, they'll say it matter of factly because it's, it's their um, accepted belief and they really do believe that that's the case they believe that we're deluded to think that Buddhism teaches something other than the worship of, of, of Krishna or, or, or however uh. the attainment of Godhood there's a real problem with this because this theory makes Buddha a god, which is not the case. Sure. Uh, I mean, or w which was not the case. And um, yeah, really taints everything and, and puts it in the wrong direction. It, it makes all the, the entire teaching and the, the entire story of the Buddha kind of uh, uh, silly. And there's one other thing that I thought of is as I, when I was talking about how these religious traditions are claimed to have the universal, the, the whole truth, I think you'd, you'd almost have room to say that Buddhism doesn't claim such a thing. That we, we might even boast of ourselves that we aren't falling into that folly because in one sense anyway because B Buddhism can accept uh, many of the doctrines of of these religions you could even say well yeah maybe Jesus Christ was the son of God uh, but who's this God guy anyway and uh, what's, he so, what's so special about him so uh, or, or in, in, in Hinduism we would accept you know Krishna, maybe Krishna exists. I mean, I, I, th I think it's a little bit silly because Krishna is actually a part of a, a Hindu... I guess you shouldn't talk. But these are stories that, that they, they composed much later on 
the god Krishna doesn't even come into Hindu religion until uh, until after the Buddha. You know, the Upanishads don't talk about Krishna, I don't think. Uh, you know, the early gods of Indra, the, the 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 Vedic god is Indra, and then you have Pajapati, and I think I think even Vishnu, I can't remember. But then it was much much later when Krishna came in the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, which were really just folk tales like the the Odyssey or the Iliad. Very similar, long oral stories that people told, very much like the, the, the stories of Homer. But then the problem is that they became uh, religious texts and they incorporated religious teachings of the Upanishads into them. And they took this religious tradition and put them in the context of these stories. And so you have the Bhagavad Gita, which is very much a religious teaching. But it's it's placed in the in the, the the mouths of the mouth of this this new god who really is a, a new god like Shiva for example who, who came up later as well. Uh, but but we uh, you know we, we could accept that there are such gods. We might not accept Krishna because we might say well it it looks a little bit more like he was kind of made up as they went along. But we might accept that Indra exists, and in fact in Buddhism we do accept Indra, because at the time of the Buddha it was well known and people were talking about him. But the Buddha said, well, you know, actually, uh, his name's not Indra, <laughs> his name's Saka. So, you know, th th this kind of thing. But we can accept that these people have this path and, and it can lead you to become one with God. We could even go so far as to say, you can become one with God. All we say is it's not enough. So. I think there, there, that is a valid point, that it's simply because these religions are trying to fit the whole universe, the complex and manifold, infinitely uh, diverse universe with all of its infinite paths and potentials into a very, very, very small framework of reality that, that their own minds are able to encompass. So I, I think in one sense we we're free from that in, in the Buddha's teaching, that we don't really try to um, figure out who is God and, and what does he want and what does he want us to do. We're not really interested, actually. We, we find a universal truth in another sense, and that is that even God, even um, heaven, you know, even Godhood ourselves or meditation practice, all of these things are made up of building blocks, just as a physicist will tell you. Uh, the, the mind is, is also, and experience in general, is made up entirely of, of building blocks, of, of physical and mental co components that are impermanent, suffering and non-self. That means, the, me the meaning is that there is no God. No matter whether you see God and He comes and talks to you, there is no God. When I'm sitting here talking to you, there is no me. When uh, None of us really exist. This place has as I was telling Sumedha, I said, this monastery has no people in it. And you have to, if you want to, the best way to get along in a monastery is to remind yourself that there's no people here. Because if there's no people, where could the problem come from? And there is no people, are no people. There are only physical and mental realities that arise and cease. Okay. <clears throat>